So careers in food and drink. So what we're going to be doing today is uh, looking at careers in food and drink, skills, knowledge and experience required, the training routes available, support for teachers, pupils and parents and carers, experience of young people working in food and drink. We're going to go through some links to Food of Fact of Life and the resources that we've got available. And then also some suggestions for further reading and particularly sources of information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop sharing and then Amy's going to share her presentation and uh, you'll come back to me at the end and we'll also have a uh, question and answer session before we finish too. So if I just... Francis, can you see that? Is that there? Can everybody see that? Yes, we can. Brilliant. Great, thank you. Um, hi, everybody. Good afternoon. Um, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to talk to you about careers in food and drink. Um, excuse my background. I have just this second finished um, training. 18 of our um, food ambassadors ready to come out and um, and hit schools so um, we've had a bit of a long day here but um, can't wait to give you a kind of a, a quick whistle stop tour of, um, of the food and drink sector. Um, so I'm um, head of marketing for the National Skills Academy for Food and Drink so very quickly who are we? Um, we're a not-for-profit organisation and we are focused entirely on supporting the food and drink sector. So everything we do is around skills, with the industry voice on skills, we make sure that um, employers are heard um, at government level and that their skills needs are taken care of. We do everything we can to simplify the skills landscape for businesses and make it much easier for them to understand. Our main area of expertise is on apprenticeships and we lead the way in setting the standards, supporting the design of new standards and supporting organisations with their career strategies. So we, we sit completely independently. We're, as I said, we're not for profit. We sit outside of the skills funding system and we are funded entirely by the food and drink industry. Um, we have a board made up of people from the food industry and we give impartial advice for uh, food and drink businesses, training providers in our sector and for schools. So careers is, um, we, we do an awful lot of things as well as careers. We're absolutely passionate about careers in the food and drinks industry. We work with government departments, whether that's across um, England, Scotland, Wales and Northern Ireland. Um, we do a lot of work with lobbying groups, with parliamentary groups. Um, and we work on employability programmes, trying to get people into the food and drink industry. So in terms of our industry and our, and our sector, um, we, it's, we spent a lot of time um, trying to dispel myths about the industry. We have quite a, a negative view from young people coming into the sector. So everything that we've created around our careers programme and around Tasty Careers has all been designed to encourage people to choose the food and drink sector as a sector of choice. So in terms of our industry, it's a really exciting place to work. Um, we have a, a really well-deserved reputation for world-class produce. Um, we're recognised for quality and innovation. Uh, the food sector as a whole is often described as farm to fork or gate to plate. So we do cover the, the whole food and drink sector. We mainly focus on manufacturing as our primary business, um, but our Tasty Careers programme and the website also covers um, the farm to fork element. So it, it does cover that production as well. Um, we have over 30 different sectors that make up the industry. So these are bakery, sea fish, butchery, drinks, dairy, animal feed. And um, the industry is made up of factories ranging from really small units with a few people to huge factories, biggest brands in the world, employing thousands of people. So we're, we're really quite diverse. And as I said, we do incorporate agriculture, farming, some hospitality, and we work quite closely with, um, with the major retailers as well. It's a great diverse sector. 
um, the, the pressure for, for, for new ideas, healthier products um, have never been more and ensures there are great opportunities for people of all ages, ages in the industry. Um, the sector covers where goes from designing high tech robots to developing new products and absolutely everything in between. Um, the food sector is fast moving, it's creative, it's innovative. There are opportunities for people with all levels of qualifications. We've got entry level role, level, entry level roles. There's a huge amount of apprenticeship opportunities in the sector. There's degree level apprenticeships, there's graduate op opportunities. It really is a sector to join and grow a full career in. Um, there's really rewarding careers. There's, there's, we see really rapid career progression in the food and drink sector and the industry has a high average pay compared to other industries, which is a great benefit. Um, and it's a really fast paced environment, which is constantly changing to keep up with consumer demands. We, we all need to eat. The industry will always have customers and we will always need a workforce to meet those needs. Um, it's the biggest manufacturing sector in the UK. It's bigger than automotive and aerospace put together. Um, it was the only sector that continued to grow through the um, 2008 economic crisis. And I'm sure you're aware it was full of key workers. It had key worker status throughout COVID. It's never been busier. And um, the sector at the moment is desperately recruiting, created tens of thousands of new roles. So tasty careers in the sector. Um, over 10 years ago now, we did a huge piece of research into the food and drinks industry to find out um, what people thought of the sector, what the barriers to entry were. And at the end of the research, most of the people, young people that had answered it had said, it's not somewhere they think as a career destination, destination of choice. It's cold, people wear wellies, people wear hairnets, there's carcasses of animals. It's not an ideal sector to work in. So following on from the research, we created um, our Tasty Careers brand to try and dispel some of those myths and to be an area of careers help and guidance for um, school children, for teachers and for parents to be able to go to one place and learn everything they can about food and drink careers. The opportunities we showcase, um, our ambassadors we've been training today will all be showcased on the website. Um, So the purpose of Tasty Careers is, is to wear, raise awareness and interest about jobs and careers in the industry. We train ambassadors out of food and drink businesses, uh, ready so that they can go into schools, talk about their jobs, talk about their careers. They can go to career fairs and discuss opportunities. Um, we're able to provide resources for schools, colleges, ambassadors. We run um, food and drink challenges with schools so that we can take in a, a variety of challenges for a, a group of students to do. Um, we're doing a huge amount of work at the moment in Wales around making a Welsh provenant food, choosing the ingredients, doing the marketing, the finance side of it. Um, and then we have our online presence, which backs up everything that we teach and all of the resources, which is all about profiling the huge range of jobs in the industry. We also run some um, something called Tasty Tours, where we can take students into businesses so they can get a real life experience of food and drink production. Uh, what we find in most cases is students are really quite taken aback with how technical, how fast moving, how forward developed these, these factories are. So the idea is we turn all of this into some kind of positive action and we signpost young people to job opportunities, or to further study opportunities, whether that be training providers, apprenticeships, or universities and colleges. The website um, puts food and drink careers firmly on the radar. Um, we spend a lot of time challenging myths and perceptions about working in the industry, and it gives us a direct engagement platform with young people. And to Hopefully you can all see that new share. So this is our Tasty Careers website. Um, you can see we've got areas for students, teachers and parents. Um, the teachers area 
talks through careers in the food and drinks industry, um, job descriptions. We've got over 100 job descriptions, very generic, but all about jobs in the food and drinks industry. So we've got kind of 100 basic job descriptions telling you um, pick an accounts assistant. So it tells you um, what the job would be about, what you would be doing, what would be expected of you, what the salary would be. Um, what qualifications you need to get into jobs. So all of these can be used as resources or all of them can use can, can be helpful for students to go in and have a good idea and a good look up at jobs that, that they're thinking of. We have a section on apprenticeships in the food industry, which talks about all the different apprenticeships, what levels they're at, what training providers deliver them, what jobs would be appropriate at the end of those ambassador at the end of those apprenticeships. And we also, all our ambassadors who we train have their own case studies on our website. So you can go in and see what a kind of real life person doing one of those jobs, exactly what that job looks like. And the final section is we have a huge host of resources for teachers for you to be able to use in, in lessons. There's a huge amount of downloadable information, whether that's about the sector, about apprenticeships, about individual specific apprenticeships or industry statistics that are maybe of interest or use within the classroom as well. Go back to where I was, bear with me. Should be back where we are. So we've got an apprenticeship zone on the website, we've got information and guidance for students and a whole host of downloadable resources for you and there's also a live jobs board on as well that our food and drink businesses advertise their kind of entry level positions in the industry so there's a huge amount of apprenticeships advertised at the moment or those kind of first and second level jobs as a, as a step up into the industry. We train um, around 50 to 100 ambassadors every year. Um, co just coming off the back of COVID, we've been a little bit quiet at the moment and we're playing catch up, but we've just finished training um, 18 ambassadors from 10 different businesses. And our ambassadors are usually kind of young apprentices or new grads, and they're trained to present kind of their story of how they got into the sector, their job, their role, their career, what they love about the industry, things that people might not know about the industry. They're able to come into schools or attend careers fairs, promoting not only their jobs, but the wide variety of careers available in the industry as well. Um, they talk, we've got a, a careers map, which is available for you to have as a download. And it talks about the huge array of jobs in the industry. Um, and they will point to case studies and information on the website as well. Um, we tried to get some ambassadors to join us this evening, but the timings of the presentation um, didn't allow us to do that. But I do have some videos for you. We are creating quite a lot of video content. Um, I, I know that COVID has made it slightly difficult to get ambassadors into schools. So we, we have created as many videos as we can. And these will all be added to the website soon as well, so that you'd be able to download those and show them in, in any classes. Well, that looks positive. Yeah. And I am an assistant brand manager within the marketing team for Nest Cafe in Nestle. Um, my role is in marketing, as I've just said, and it is where I look after some very, very well known brands like Nest Cafe Gold Frothy Coffee and Coffee Mate. Uh, my role can be anything from packaging briefs, uh, consumer complaints, looking at new recipes. Uh, social media, uh, TV promotions, budget management, uh, projects, new flavours. It's a very, very varied role um, that I, I really, really do enjoy. It's really tested me in terms of tracking um, performance within brands and making sure that your brand is the best, especially within FMCG, uh, the market that volatile, the role, that my role is definitely something that is a challenge every single day. I got into the role 
by completing actually some work experience with Nestle when I was 17 years old. Um, and from that, I then joined the Nestle Commercial Apprenticeship Scheme. So I did my degree, which was fully funded by the company uh, through Sheffield Hallam in business management. And I got to do four rotations around the business uh, in sales, marketing, supply chain and HR, where I then specialised into marketing. I just I loved it. It's so much fun. You get to be really creative. Um, and you get to see your products out on, on out in shops, which is, again, amazing. Uh, the most exciting thing, I think, about my job is you get the chance to work on brands that everybody knows. And you've mentioned Nescafe or Kit Kat. Uh, everyone thinks, oh, yeah, I know that. Oh, I, I love the product. And then when you get to see them in store or some of your work, new packaging, new flavors, and people are actually eating them or trying them or it's a TV advert. It's so cool to, to see that actually come from like an idea uh, into fruition and into a shop. My advice for anybody considering apprenticeships and going forward within education is don't be pigeonholed into always thinking you have to go to university to the traditional way. There are other options like what I did, apprenticeship groups that really help people get in and kickstart their careers, which is what I've done. And I think if you have a passion, definitely follow that and gain as much experience as you can at a young age to really define whether you like uh, that area or you don't. I was fortunate and got to do four rotations to see if I liked HR sales, supply chain, marketing. So make sure you're broad um, and consider all options. And best of all, good luck. I'm Jennifer Colonco and I'm a fourth year engineering apprentice at CCEP in East Kilbride. I previously studied an HND in fitness, health and exercise and then I decided I fancied a career change so I started to research apprenticeships. I've always had a hobby working on cars growing up so I decided to look for engineering apprenticeships. Then I found the CCEP apprenticeship so I applied for it, went through the application process then I went to an assessment centre and then I was offered the job. And the most exciting thing about my role I've found so far is that not every day is the same. There's always challenges every day you go into work and you're always looking how to improve the lines. Any advice I would give is it's never too late to change your career. I'm Amelia Cochran. I'm a third year mechanical and electrical engineering apprentice at Coca Cola European Partners. I am based at Sigpop site, which is our supply chain, one of our supply chain factories where we produce the drinks and distribute them. That is based in South East London, Kent area. I am in my third year of my apprenticeship. I started in September 2018 and I'm not due to finish my entire apprenticeship until July 2022. I have always loved engineering hence why I wanted to go into an apprenticeship I knew an apprenticeship was the right path for me being very practical I studied engineering at school since the age of 13 we took our options in secondary school for our GCSEs and I've always loved engineering and had a mechanical aptitude and when the opportunity arose that I could do a mechanical and electrical engineering apprentice which was another avenue I'd wanted to pursue I had to jump at the opportunity and to work for Coca Cola European Partners was just the most amazing incredible opportunity I could ever ask for so I had to jump at that. In my role I can either be on a breakdown and responding to very reactive mechanical or electrical principles or I can be performing planned maintenance routines or doing asset care which is a bit like maintenance really. So my days really do vary. I wouldn't say I have a typical day. I, I can either be 140 feet up a crane or on top of a sugar silo, or I can be underneath a machine doing maintenance. So it all does really vary and you can never predict what's gonna happen in a day. The most challenging thing about my role is the fact that I am a woman and do predominantly work with men. Not that that's the challenge itself, but the challenge is that I'm not very strong. So when stuff is tightened to such a high torque or it's just really tight and I can't get it undone, I do have to struggle. But there are ways and means around that. 
I use long reach spanners. I have a little pry bar, which I can use, which to get more leverage. And I just have to get my body weight behind it. It's, it can be very difficult and it does require a lot of strength, but I'm not built like a six foot man. You know, it's, it's all very different, but I can always ask for help. And if I can't get anything undone, the first thing I have to do is ask and just have to admit defeat really when I can't undo something, but we all have to work with that. The advice I would give anyone, whether they're old or young or leaving school or looking to go into an apprenticeship or university is always ask for help and net, nothing is a silly question. If you don't understand something and you need more guidance or you need more support, always ask for help because a manager or a team member would always rather you understand what you are doing rather than having a half hazard go and not really understand the requirements of a task or a question and always ask for help. Everyone wants to help you and wants to watch you succeed. And why would they not help you? And nothing's a silly question. You know, if you if you're not quite sure how something works or you're not quite sure what you're doing, just ask because they'd rather you ask than do something you're not quite sure on and not be too comfortable. And plus that way you learn and you grow more. Thank you. So our ambassadors, um, we have around um, 300 trained ambassadors at the moment. Um, as I say, we're training more and more um, on a kind of every three or four months, we're training more. Um, they're trained to come out to schools and talk about their career and the sector as a whole. Some of them work for, as you heard there, some of them work for huge multinational businesses. They work for Coca-Cola, for Nestle, for Premier Foods, people that people everybody's heard of. Some of them work for non-branded businesses, um, such as Greencore or Two Sisters or ABP, all still huge players in the food and drink sector, but maybe not quite as well known. And we have some that work for some, some really small businesses that can talk about a wide range of experiences they've got very different backgrounds so some will have come into the sector through apprenticeships some through degrees some straight from school leavers and we have a really wide range of, of, of ambassadors that do various different jobs so we've got engineers we've got health and safety executives we've got people in sales and marketing um, we've got people that look at look at nutrition I've just done um, some food technologists that are in big businesses working on recipes and recipe developments so it all depends um, where schools are based in terms of their nearest ambassadors but we always try and match schools with with ambassadors that would be relevant for some of the programs that they're doing um, this is a is a snapshot of our careers map so most of the presentations are based around our careers map um, we have a, a another version of this careers map that covers the land base so the farming side of it we have a retail map that looks at all of the retailers and what that industry looks like and we also have this um, translated into Welsh for any Welsh schools we do quite a lot of funded activity on tasty careers in Wales so if anyone wants to pick up and understand a bit more about what we do in Wales um, we're running quite different programs there that's all funded by Welsh government um, so in terms of how we can support you, we have got a huge amount of resources for teachers on the website, for students and for parents. We've got information on myth busting to try and help people understand the industry. Uh, we can help arrange visits to food and drink businesses for you. We've got maps that we can send over that you can use in schools. We can arrange ambassadors to join schools or careers fairs. Um, and we've also got some materials for a schools challenge if you wanted to run something like that within your school. Um, hopefully that's everything um, that you need to know in 25 minutes about the food and drink sector. Um, in terms of that, you know, that the sector is um, full of vacancies at the moment. And as I, as I mentioned, there are vacancies for, for every different level. We've got entrance level vacancies. People are looking for graduates, for school leavers, for people with A-levels. They're looking at people that want to go on apprenticeship programmes, which in the sector are amazing they're all obviously fully paid for we run amazing degree level apprenticeships where the young person would get their degree paid for at the same time as working and being paid to do their job um, it's a really really exciting sector um, that we'd, we'd love to talk to you in in a bit more detail about or, or help in any way we can it's the end of the slideshow so i'll stop sharing screens Great. Thank you, Amy. That was brilliant. Thank you. So um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to share 
my screen and just go through a few more things and then we've got a few questions to ask you there's been a few things popping up in the chat box and it might be that you want to have a look at the chat box while i'm talking and see if there's anything that you can answer and then i've got some other questions written down so if i share my screen okay hopefully you can see this Okay, so um, Amy's just talked about all the fantastic resources that they have available. And uh, we also have got some resources available on Food Effects of Life around careers. So we have a downloadable poster, which you can't quite see because I'm in the way, but um, a downloadable poster, which looks at uh, the different careers in the food industry. And, and we have approached it from sort of farm to fork. So we sort of said that careers are sort of uh, feed the nation or inform the nation. So we've got sort of an outline of the different types of careers that people could do. And then we've got some really nice case studies of people at all different stages of their careers, very similar to the ones that Amy's got, but sort of just talking about what sort of got people into the different careers, um, what motivates them, what their day's like, what's uh, what's really interests them so they're there for you to download and have a look at um we've also got a new area on the website around supporting pupils with additional needs and particularly some res um, resources around developing skills for work and you might be interested in having a look at those and seeing if you've got pupils that um, uh, have additional needs it might be able to uh, help give them some support um, but particularly careers in hospitality and catering, there are some fantastic opportunities for pupils and young people with additional needs in catering and hospitality. And we've got a video and a presentation from a webinar which was last year, which um, might be worth having a look at that might give you some inspiration how to help your pupils find a meaningful career. Some information about further sources that you can go to. So um, Careers Wales, Amy's talked a lot about the work that they're doing in Wales, but um, Careers Wales is, is a, a general website that you can have a look at. Child education is um, another area that you could find some resources for students and teachers. And they've got um, their child food ambassadors that go into schools as well. Uh, DYW Scotland, which supports young people into work, the Food and Drink Federation, there's a separate Food and Drink Federation in Scotland, the Institute of Food Science and Technology have also got resources around careers. Um, there's the National Careers Week website, and of course this week is National Careers Week, so do have a look at that and see what's available there. And also if you're thinking about careers in agriculture, the National Farmers Union also has information about careers. If you're in Northern Ireland, there's NI Direct, there's a Springboard that works across the UK that does a, a lot of uh, support around um, careers in hospitality and catering, and they've got lots of information on their website, and then I've included the link to Tasty Careers as well on here. Just a little bit before we move on to asking Amy some questions, is just thinking about some more training that we've got coming up. So uh, we've got some virtual practical workshops, and these are looking at food skills, recipes, and diversity. So we've got one in just a couple of weeks, which is about over middle around Middle Eastern cuisines. And then we've got Eastern Asian, Caribbean islands, South American, and Eastern European cuisines. So the information's available on the website for you to have a look and book if you're interested. And then of course, we've got our online courses available too. So before we finish, just want to think about some questions to, um, to ask Amy. So I've got a few written down, Amy, and I think there may have been a few in the chat box as well. I don't know if you've had an opportunity to answer those at all. What I'll do really quickly is drop yeah. 
my oh hold on i need to send it to everybody don't i let me try that again i'll drop my email address in because i know that there might be a few of you that are dashing off so my email address is on there so so feel free to to contact me so i'll just go through i think the ones that i can see so tasty tours um there is no cost we get our members our businesses to fund that so they would more quite often fund a, a minibus if you need one so all we need to know from you is if someone drops me an email we can find out who our nearest site is and we can help facilitate that for you um so yeah taste tools ambassadors just just drop me an email and i can arrange all of that directly um gary that we we don't tend we've never had background checks required on them all i'm, I'm quite certain that the businesses will cover that usually in schools we've been told that because ambassadors would always be supervised by a teacher that that wouldn't be necessary. So because teachers tend to never leave the room with them, um, we, we've never had a problem with it before, um, but that, that, that's where we are with it. But, but if, it, if it's a barrier, I'm sure we can find a way around it. Um, one of the things I didn't mention before is all our ambassadors are 18 to 24. And part of a bear, kind of bear, might give or take a, a year either side, but one of the things that one of the pointers in our research was they found young people found it much better to talk to, to hear from young people that they weren't too far removed from them. So so hopefully they are really good young role models that they can really kind of aspire to that kind of career. Um, we work across the whole of the UK. Um, we do partnership work in Scotland. So Francis has just mentioned the Food and Drink Federation in Scotland. We do partnership work with them, but we have somebody in Northern Ireland and we have somebody specifically in Wales. Um, the Welsh query, um, I will pick up your email and get in touch with you separately because we could we could definitely have a look at that. As I've said, the, the funding in Wales is slightly wider, so it might cover a few more activities. Um, so I'll pick up with Francis and make sure I can get a copy of your email. Um, so yeah, I, from a Welsh perspective, either drop me an email or drop your email into the um, into the box. In terms of how young we do the tours, we do anything. We make sure that we do work you would work directly with the um, the businesses so that you could find out who the right thing is. So we've done some primary school level, we've done some kind of GCSE level, we've done some A-level students. So it's just a bit of a project for us to find out what age your students are and how we can then tailor the tours. And we do some workshops at the end of the tours as well, if that's of interest. So we've done some where we've been into a bread factory and they've done a little kind of mini half hour pro project on designing some bread packaging and things like that so we can we uh, so we can absolutely make them them suitable um quick question about video resources um suitable for deaf children absolutely we're working with we're working on getting some of them signed as well as captions so we're going to be doing some the video things are quite new for us um mainly around the barriers of covid um, but we are going to be launching those on the website and seeing if we can get some of them signed and we'll, we'll, we'll be working on captions as well um, yeah, tours, tasty tours on the website. It's not on the website, um, but but please just just contact me. I think that might be everything. Fantastic, thank you. That's great. Um, I have a few more sort of general yeah. questions, so I'm going to put you on the spot here. I'm afraid. Um, so, where do you think the first port of call would be for a student wishing to follow a career in food and drink? In terms of if. So, so the, the reason that we built our website was very much about that to, to be the to be the one place and I think we're quite a fragmented industry, which, which is difficult because, as you said, there's quite a lot of career advice out there um, from tasty careers we've tried to do it from the whole of the sector perspective. Mm. So that you know it's not butchery specific it's not bakery specific it's not food technology specific but it could really give you an idea um and open your eye up to that there's some brilliant careers quizzes and i'll see if i can get you the link for them francis that you as a student you go on and you answer lots of questions i guess kind of the stuff that i did before um a long time ago um but you answer lots of questions about what you like doing and and it comes back out at the end and, and it's food specific but it kind of says oh you could be a you'd be suited to a baker or you'd be suited to a food engineer so we're trying to find some more things that could fit for people that have no idea what they want to do how they can map mm. their skills into suitable food jobs 
But one of the ambassadors Fantastic. just changed, did say she had no idea what to do. Somebody recommended Tasty Careers to her. She has trained as a food technologist and she found her first job using the website. So quite exciting moment. Brilliant. That's a great endorsement, isn't it? Um, this is more about skills and sort of knowledge, really. So as you've shown, the, the, the sector is hugely varied. Um, but is there sort of one skill or piece of knowledge that you think is really important for young people to have? Enthusiasm, I think, is the main thing. People just want somebody that wants to learn, is passionate about it. Um, interestingly enough, we are just launching a passport for food and drink, which is going to be funded by the Welsh Government as a pilot and hopefully the Department of Work and Pensions here. Um, and our idea is to work with big food businesses who could work with local schools and sponsor their students to do it. And this food and drink passport is food safety level two, health and safety level two, HACCP level two and allergens awareness, all done online, all quite basic. Um, we'd probably say from year 10 onwards, but we're looking for businesses to put a pot of money together and schools could approach us and say, look, we've got a food technology class and they're all, a, they're all interested in it. Could we do that? And, and that is effectively your passport to compliance. So those courses are the ones that you would absolutely need to have before working in a, in a food factory. So our food and drink compliance passport launches on the 28th of March. Um, and that's something that we're gonna have businesses sponsor it so that schools could access it and, and add it in as, as, as potentially an offering for some students and, and even if they're not studying food technology could be that they're doing business administration or business studies but they've got a real interest in the food sector and they could go and do this and this certificate would effectively give them a certificate of readiness to, to, to join the sector. Sounds fantastic. Certainly food hygiene, I know that's something that a lot of schools have, have been asking about, so um, that sounds great. Um, also about work experience. Um, now, um, do you think that work experience, so if you're at school or even if uh, they've gone, pupils have gone on to sort of further education and they've got their summer holidays and things, do you think work experience is a good idea? Definitely, although it can be quite tricky in the food industry. So there's quite a lot of restrictions around. It's very difficult for food businesses to get under 16 year olds in, not in for a tour, that, that's very easy, but in and working, there can be quite a lot of um, kind of hoops to jump through. But again, quite a lot of local companies will help organize work experience. I, I can't stress more that the food and drink sector are so desperate for labor at the moment. They are doing everything that they possibly can to open up to schools and kind of create that pipeline. But work experience, it's, it's kind of linked to enthusiasm. Anything to say that people have, have done things and have been interested in it um, makes a huge amount of difference. And, and certainly people, getting actually actively getting in touch with food and drink companies, I think we'll be quite surprised at how quickly they will they will get back and, and, off, and offer to talk to them and, and help them and, and look at whether that's entry positions or, or just a bit more information about them. Great, great, that sounds fantastic. Right, and then the last question, um, just thinking about sort of the influence that parents and carers have over their young people's decision making and have you got any sort of any guidance that you can give to the teachers that we've got with us today about information and support for parents and carers? So our website has a parent section and that talks to them and there's, there's our parents are our biggest barrier I think from a sector perspective, two things from a sector perspective um, parents are quite a barrier to, to people entering the sector but also our sector is really big on apprenticeships. And I think that parent generation has not seen the huge kind of revolution in apprenticeships. And they're still kind of thought of as manual labor, a little bit second class. And mm. so we do a lot of work to kind of myth bust around the apprenticeship. So again, our website has a huge section about the apprenticeships, the range that are available. And I think the main work is, is taking apprenticeships and talking about what they what they are in a in a new world we've, we've got a great graphic which i'll send over francis which talks about all the different levels and all the different progression routes and all the different ways that you can slip mm -hmm. into the industry you really can see and i think for parents they want to see a career and they want to see a progression route because that's how their world yeah. work 
was and certainly you know that the food industry can absolutely offer that Great. Yes, if you could send that to me, that'd be brilliant. And then I can pass that on to people. That's fantastic. OK, thank you. So that's all the questions that I've had. So um, thank you so much, Amy. That's been really, really useful and hopefully um, has been helpful to, to the teachers as well. And great to find out so much about the Tasty Careers programme and, and the website. Um, so as far as today's webinar is concerned, uh, we've now come to a close. So thank you ever so much, everybody, for joining us this afternoon.